Hello, my name is Bev Bryant and I'm a naturalist at the Wear Nature Center. Welcome to Protecting Yourself from Summer Supervillains, Taking on Ticks, a series of educational videos created through a partnership between the Wear Nature Center and the Village of Greendale Health Department. In episode three of our Taking on Ticks series, we will learn about the life cycle of the deer tick and how the different life stages play a role in the transmission of Lyme disease to humans. Let's face it, much of our interest in ticks is because we, we can become sick from diseases passed by ticks when they bite us. Each of our three species of ticks in Wisconsin can cause disease. The wood tick, the lone star tick, and the black-legged or deer tick. The wood tick or American dog tick can carry the bacteria that causes Rocky Mountain spotted fever. However, the incidence of transmission in Wisconsin is extremely low. The Lone Star tick harbors the bacteria that causes ehrlichiosis, but they are uncommon in Wisconsin, being found more in the South Central and Eastern United States. The black-legged tick or deer tick, on the other hand, is really bad news. They are now commonly found throughout Wisconsin and even in suburban and urban areas and carry many pathogens that can cause serious illness in humans if left untreated. They are famous for transmitting Lyme disease, but they also transmit the bacteria that causes ehrlichiosis and anaplasmosis, the parasite that causes babiosis and the Powassan virus. It's important to understand the deer tick life cycle so we can protect ourselves. Remember, the bite of a deer tick itself does not cause diseases. Ticks can acquire bacteria, viruses, or parasites from the animals they draw blood from. During the process of feeding on a host, the tick can ingest these disease agents. And then they remain inside the tick as it molts into the next life stage. And when it takes its next meal, it can spread the disease agent to a new host as it releases saliva into the bite site. Lyme disease is caused by spiral-shaped bacteria, Borrelia burgdorferii and Borrelia myoni. The bacteria does not cause the tick to become sick. The tick is a vector for Lyme disease. Public health science refers to animals that spread diseases without themselves become infected as becoming infected as vectors. Like all ticks, deer ticks only feed three times during their lives, once as a larva, once as a nymph, and once as an adult. Deer ticks may become infected as larva by feeding on a small mammal or a ground feeding bird that has the bacterium in their blood. Larva will not feed again, so they do not possess, they do not pose any danger to humans. The larva then molts into a nymph the size of a poppy seed, which then can spread Lyme disease to humans if it bites them. Most Lyme disease infections come from bites from nymphs because they are so small, we rarely find them before they have time to feed on us for days. We can also become infected from the bite of an adult tick harboring the bacterium. Infected mice, birds, and deer act as reservoirs for the bacteria. The transmission of Lyme disease increases when populations of mice and deer are high in an area. We will explore this more in episode um, four. The entire life cycle of a deer tick takes two years. It's helpful to understand when the different life stages occur by season so we can be more aware, aware of when the infectious nymphs and adults are most active. Um, so as you can see, the life cycle starts in the springtime when the adult females lay their eggs. Those eggs will then hatch into a larva during the summer months. Uh, during that time, the larva is gonna feed on small rodents or maybe um, ground feeding birds. They are very small and stay only on the ground, so they're not a danger to infect humans. So at this point, the larva has the opportunity to pick up um, the bacteria and when they take their blood meal in the summer. And that larva is going to uh, grow and 
continue um, for a whole season until the next spring when they molt and become a nymph. So now they're a very small eight-legged nymph and that nymph if it has um, the larva had been infected with Lyme disease could then pass that disease on to the host that it feeds on during the um, early spring to early summer. So this area here is the, the, the time frame when we are most at risk for uh, being infected by a nymph from that has Lyme disease. So from early spring through um, summer um, is when the nymphs are active. And then they're going to molt and become an adult in the fall. So in the fall then those adults are going to be trying to find each other and mate. They both the male and the female need to have a blood meal. So that is another period of time where uh, we are susceptible to infection. However, you can see that adults are actually out you know, they survive all winter and then emerge in the spring to lay their eggs. So um, there really is the potential to become infected at any time during the year. But surely spring and early summer are the most uh, critical periods of time to be aware. So this is a graphic from the TIC app and you can check it out um, when you visit the TIC app, but it shows the prevalence of the different life stages during different months of the year here in the Midwest. So we're just going to watch this and then um, discuss a bit. So as you can see, the the stage, the months when the nymphs are at the highest population level is about this time of the year. It's going to be from late May into June and then tapering off as we continue on into early fall. And since the nymph is that one that's the size of a poppy seed um, and it's the hardest one for us to be aware of, this is really the critical period when people, most people become infected with Lyme disease. So they may get affected early in the spring and not display symptoms until later in the summer, but um, it's most often in the spring and early summer that people do become affected, infected. And then the adults are going to peak in their activity in October, November, and December. So there's another peak in the fall, late fall, when people can become um, infected. But just, just as a reminder, um, their adult ticks can become active even during the winter months, January, February, March, April, um, when we get days that are above 40 degrees. So um, be on your guard all year long, but particularly in the spring and early summer. Now, deer ticks are truly a stealthy supervillain. They are as tiny as freckles, so it's important that we use our protective measures when we're outside. We will show you how to dress to protect against ticks in episode five, but protection can only go so far. So it's also important for us to understand the role that animals such as the white-tailed deer and uh, the deer mouse play in controlling the spread of Lyme disease. And that's up next in episode four, so keep watching. Thanks.